Hi, I'm Colin. This is my kitchen. My garage is in a bit of a state right now, so I thought I'd do the intro from here. I built a travel guitar for the Great Guitar Build-Off this year, um, and it has some interesting features that I'd like to get into. But first, I'd like to thank Crimson Guitars for setting up this competition and uh, the community that's built up around it. This is my second time building for the Great Guitar Build-Off, and it's been a lot of fun to be part of, and it's been really neat to see all of the, uh, the guitars being built. There's some amazing guitars out there. Anyway, this guitar I've built, I actually built it as a wedding gift for my sister and her husband. It's a travel guitar to accompany them on their travels together, both figuratively and literally. And uh, it has a blue burst, which represents the Oceanside town where they first met. This guitar, I wanted it to be small and robust. Uh, you know, a travel guitar. I wanted it to be able to stand up to travel conditions. But I also wanted to... I didn't want to sacrifice volume and, and sound. So I had an idea to put a responsive cedar soundboard inside the guitar with the bridge on the soundboard sticking up through the top of the guitar. That way I could make the top of the guitar out of something more durable, maple in this case. For the shape of the guitar, I was really inspired by a build from last year's build off by NAH Guitars. He made a guitar based on a Turner Model 1. At the time, I had never heard of a Turner Model 1, so his guitar was the first I had seen like this with a cylindrical top and back radius to it. Uh, I thought it was just the coolest thing I had ever seen. So I really wanted to incorporate that design into my guitar. I have a series of five build videos that show the construction of this guitar. This video is just build highlights. It's my final video. I thought it would be kind of fun to show the build in reverse, to disassemble the guitar and see how it's made, sort of. So let's start with taking the finish off. I used a polyester UV cure finish on the top of this guitar. I used it because it's really scratch resistant and tough, but uh, because of this, it's also very difficult to polish. I spend a lot of time polishing. For the back and sides, I used a water-based matte finish that I could spray on. This is the first burst finish I've done. It was tricky, I had to redo it a couple of times, but I like the way it turned out. On the back and sides, I used white ash, and I really wanted that grain to pop out. So I stained it with a dark walnut stain and then sanded the stain off. Here I'm unsanding it, and you can watch the stain return to the lighter areas of the wood. Moving on to the fretboard, this guitar has hemispherical fret ends, or hot dog frets. Here I'm returning the fret to its original shape. this jig on my drill press to press the frets in. Luckily I can also get the frets to pop out. Here's another jig of mine for bending the radius of the fretboard into the frets.
guitar is my fifth build, and carving the neck used to be a pretty intimidating job, but as I'm getting better at it, uh, it's starting to be one of my favorite parts. This guitar uses a bolt-on neck joint. Actually, I use the same dimensions as Fender uses for their neck joint, for the pocket and the tenon. These for rules for the neck bolts, I made them myself out of aluminum stock. Here I've just finished cutting the truss rod channel and I'm cleaning it up. The truss rod channel is always fraught with troubles for me, but I was pretty proud of myself on this build. It went really smoothly. I used maple fret dots on this guitar. I cut them myself from some maple binding stock. I finally bought myself a proper fret saw for this guitar. I've used Japanese pull saws on other builds, but the kerf is just not quite the right width and I always have trouble putting the frets in. I built this jig as well to help me keep the fret slot straight. I used plastic binding on the top of this guitar. I used a trick where you tape the binding in dry and then you flood acetone into the seam and it floods in there, dissolves the plastic and the plastic adheres itself to the wood. This guitar has a cylindrical top and back profile, which proved a challenge to work with. I often had to build, you know, elaborate forms and clamp and calls, like you see here. For the back binding, I used a technique where you tape the binding in dry and then flood the seams with thin super glue or CA glue. Here I am unbending the walnut binding. I use this uh, copper pipe to steam bend the sides and the binding for this guitar. Here's a shot of the side sander I made for myself. It uses an arbor and a sanding sleeve from my spindle sander. Now we're starting to take the body apart. Here you can see the back is off and you can see the internal soundboard and how it's supported in the middle of the guitar. Okay, now the top is off. 
you can see there's a sort of bridge plate on the top of the soundboard. That slot, that's just a locating slot. So the bridge will sit in that slot and poke up through the top of the guitar. I coated the inside of the guitar with shellac. Here I'm taking it all out. I think the go-bar deck is my favorite way of clamping anything. Here I'm taking the soundboard out of the guitar again. Now is probably a good time to mention that guitar mold. That's an adjustable guitar mold I made for myself. Uh, this guitar is the first guitar I've built with it. I designed this mold to be able to handle uh, anything from a travel guitar like this up to a full-size jazz arch top. So I hope to use this for many more guitars in the future. Moving on to brace carving. On the soundboard, I wanted to save as much bass response as I could, so I shaved the braces down quite a bit. On the top and back, uh, it was really just about weight savings. The braces there weren't so much about sound as they were about structural support. Removing the braces from the soundboard. These braces were sanded to a 50 foot radius to give the soundboard just a slight dome. The back braces were sanded into the two foot cylindrical radius and that's what gave the back its shape. Here I'm sanding the cylindrical profile into the sides of the guitar. My adjustable guitar mold was too big for this, so I had to make this jig. Okay, we're almost there. Here I am removing the kerfing. Here's a few shots of me making the side supports. Finally, I need to unbend these sides. I have them clamped up in the mold like this to dry and set their shape. And finally, straightening the sides. This was my first task on the go-bar deck, to laminate the top. I laminated the top maple piece with birch to give it a little more strength because of the sound holes in it.
Here I'm showing off my radius dish. It has a 24 inch cylindrical radius. And now finally, we're just down to a stack of lumber. I really enjoyed making this guitar. I learned a lot. It challenged me in a lot of ways. Almost everything was new to me about this. From the design of the guitar to the cylindrical top and back, to the blue burst, and even the flat finish of the sides and the back. I think it turned out really well though, and I hope you like it. Thanks for watching.